welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thanks so much for joining. My name is Joanne Young. This has been requested many times, so today I'm doing it. These are my top five brushes, must-have brushes that you need to take you through any painting. No matter what stage or level you at are in painting, these are going to help you so much. So we're going to walk through this step by step, one brush at a time. I'm going to show you why each one is so important and which ones that you need. And we're going to complete a painting today at the same time. So stay tuned. You don't want to miss any of these tips and techniques. We're working on an 11 by 14 stretched canvas. This is an older piece. You can see some texture in it. That's from all the layers of paint that I've got underneath. And we've got some colors here that I want to go over that we're going to be using. We've got light ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, turquoise, neon red, lemon yellow, sap green, Mars Black and Titanium White. Okay, so these are the colors that you're gonna need to complete today's painting. Whatever variation of these colors you might have will work just fine. You don't have to have these exact colors. I will list them below in the description as well as links to my Patreon page. And by the way, thank you so much to all my patrons. You know who you are and I appreciate each and every one of you, so thank you. And I'll also have links to other tutorials that you might find helpful. Uh, specifically, I have a whole playlist just for beginners learning to create landscapes with acrylic paint. I'm gonna go over quickly some of the brands of paints that I'm using today because many of you are, are curious to know what kinds of paints to buy if you're just starting out. Um, so I really recommend if you're just beginning and you've never painted with acrylic before, you might want to try something a little bit looser, like some Art Deco, the runny paints, and maybe some Americana. Um, that's what I used when I first began painting. And now I really just use heavy body. I love the texture of it and I love the color and I love how a little bit of it just goes a really long way and you don't need to do, you don't need to apply many, many coats of this. Um, so I've got a Liquitex here for my turquoise. I like that brand. So I don't like one brand more than the other. These are all very good ones to use that I highly recommend. I'm not affiliated or sponsored by any of these companies. I just recommend stuff I like. This is Grumbacher. My it's a, it's a sap green or hooker's green. This one's called hooker's green. And I've got Arteza, which I love very, very much. I'll leave a link below in the description for their paints. They're wonderful. And this is my titanium white. I like titanium white when I paint because it's the brightest and um, I like bright highlights and I like the pretty pastels that it helps to create when I use it. And then I've got another Liquitex here for my light blue violet. And like I said, these are all the colors that we're using today, you guys, so that's why I'm going over these specific colors. I've also got my Thalo Blue, which I use a lot for water and skies, and this is uh, Amsterdam, another wonderful brand. And then more Liquitex, Mars Black, and Neon Red. So this is a nice brand for neon. If you're interested in trying neon paints, Holbein is wonderful, Liquitex. Um, there's a few out there that are really good. If you guys have any recommendations or um, can help suggest a few, just put, it, put them down in the comments below. Um, so let's go ahead and get started on this, guys. I'm really excited. So first, I'm gonna begin with the sky. So the first brush, large blending brush like this, this is a two inch. You can get these from an art store or you can just get them in the paint section at a hardware store. The reason why you need to have a large brush like this is for covering large areas, okay? You're not gonna be able to do that You'll draw yourself nuts if you're trying to cover and create an entire background with a small brush. Okay guys, so for this sky, I'm gonna take light ultramarine blue and a little bit of white. I'm just gonna simply do a crisscross. See how quickly and easily we're getting that coverage? And you can create clouds as well by using this large brush. So I'm going to make it a little bit brighter in color. I'm just going to keep pulling back and forth like that. Now I'm not going to go down all the way with it because I plan to have a waterfall right about here. So all of this, so we're going to make just, I'll make a little line like this. And I did a painting similar to this in black and white only. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want something a little bit more detailed. There's a little path and rocks and, 
and uh, it's a pretty little painting and you can learn a lot as well by just painting in black and white um, but anyways I'm just gonna have the sky stop right about there then I'm gonna come in with a little bit of white and I'll show you how you can create some clouds so these are larger clouds obviously and then I'm gonna come in with a smaller brush just make sure you guys can see that okay all right just little scoops like that and then I'm gonna just wash this brush off and leave it there for when we use it again possibly down below okay brush number two a filbert brush this brush I could do an entire landscape actually with this these are wonderful brushes in fact out of all the brushes I'm going to show you today all five of them I would recommend this one be the first on your list of brushes to buy this is really really vital this will take you so far to painting so I'm gonna pull a little bit of white I'm not getting my brush wet a little bit of white and just on the tip like this and I'm just gonna start doing the same kind of technique but you're gonna get more of a rounded shape so if you like that if you love making puffy clouds this is the brush for you so you can do little scoops like that look how quickly you get it done or you can go over and create little peaks on your clouds and I've got a lot of different videos specifically on just how to paint clouds and skies so I'll leave links down below for that as well now these are uh, techniques and tips and tricks that I've taught myself and learnt over the past almost 20 years now and I'm sharing it with you guys so these are really really key in helping you paint easier so you're not stressed out about painting clouds and and foliage like we're, we're gonna go over speaking of foliage this brush is also wonderful for creating those little moss uh, plants and ferns and vines even uh, it's a really a great brush I can't say enough about the filbert brush so be sure to get one of these now I'm just for the fun of it gonna take a little bit of this neon red and I'll mix it up right here So if you just want to add a little subtle color to your sky, you can pull in a little bit of this and look how pretty that is. Careful not to overblend. Just lightly put it on there. If you push really hard, nothing's left, right? You're just kind of just pushing off the paint itself. So you want to know how to apply the paint. Um, that could be a whole other video, but hopefully I'm going to touch on as much as I can here for you guys today I want to give you the most out of each video because I appreciate you guys taking the time to tune into my channel and watch my videos so I want to make it worth your while so I really like the way this light uh, peachy pinky color is looking so I'm going to continue to add this and then we'll move on maybe towards maybe right here how about we add a little sun right here so I'm just gonna continuously turn little circles continuously like this then I'm gonna wash my brush off so I need a towel here so I'm gonna wash my brush off and to make it really bright in the middle I can gently can you hear that I'm very gently scrubbing scrubbing sounds harsh I'm not being rough with my brush it kind of sounds like I'm pushing hard but I'm being very careful to take off that paint underneath so we're getting rid of that blue in order to be able to apply a light peach color that I'm going to make with white a little bit of that neon red And it's going to be a little bit dark right now, but then we're going to come over. Oh, that's pretty. So you want to use titanium white with a little bit of neon paint. It really gives you that nice glow, but yet it keeps it soft at the same time. So I'll just apply a little bit more of the titanium white over top like that. And 
Maybe I'll just add, I don't want to waste this paint to my brush, so I think I'll just add some of that right underneath here. And I really love color, you guys know that. So I'm even going to pick up a little bit of turquoise. Still using, a little bit more white in there. Still using my filbert brush. And blend it in. Usually the bottom of the sky is going to be a little bit lighter in color. And why not add a few more colors if you can? It just This is what's going to change your painting and make it fun more enjoyable to paint and enjoyable to look at. We all need a little bit more fun in our lives and color, don't we? There, I think that's pretty. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that. I'm gonna wash this, this brush out and we're gonna switch over. Actually, we're gonna use a large blending brush again because we have a large area here to cover. So we need to pick our brushes out accordingly to what we're painting. So I'm making sure that I have most of the water out of it. So because I want to build up a really nice contrast, I'm going to start with a dark, dark green. So I'm going to pick my green up like this and take a little bit of black. And you can see how strong that black is. You don't need very much. Okay, and now this is gonna seem kind of scary, but I'm gonna go right across like that because I just wanna get this all covered up. You can go down as well. I'm running out of paint, so I'm just gonna quickly mix up some more. Just brush along the bottom like that. I'm going to leave a little space down here for the water and I'm going to purposely add a tiny bit of that green in there, that greenish black, because then once I apply the color of the water, the waterfall coming down over top of a little bit of that green and black, it's going to look like there's uh, maybe some rocks under the water or um, some shadows, so it's kind of beneficial, well it's really beneficial to do kind of an underpainting before you add your water. Um, but this is going to be more of a simple tutorial today, so I'm not going to do a whole lot. Um, but we've got our basic coverage here. What I want to do is while I've got, I still have lots of paint on this brush, so I'm going to show you another excellent technique and uh, the quickest way to paint a forest. I call it my instant forest. Now this is just dried a little bit because I've been talking, so I'm going to get my brush a little bit wet. I'm going to line my brush up right here, so I'm going to line it up like this, press, pull, and flick up. I'm going to continue to do this, making them smaller and smaller. So depending on how much perspective you want, if you want it to feel like we're closer and this is really far away, then you can do that. Now we're kind of going over the pretty turquoise that we have there, right? So I'm gonna be a little bit more careful on this side. I'm just gonna do a little bit like this, little tiny ones. Okay, so there's your instant for it. Now, for the next part, we don't need that anymore. I'm gonna put that away. Our number three must-have brush, a mop brush. You definitely need a mop brush. I'll show you why you need a mop brush. Mop brushes are so important because you need to sometimes make little bushes and you want those bushes to be in the background looking kind of soft. Well, this is the brush for you. You can also use this as a blending brush. Um, so it's quite versatile. I use it for many different things. So this brush will take you really far in your paintings. We're going to create some bushes before we add our waterfall. And you don't want to get this brush wet. These are one of the brushes that you don't want to get wet first. So I'm going to take a little bit of yellow first and then some green. Now you want to tap to load the brush and then we'll start right up here Then we're going to tap down so it's not showing up that well let's use a little bit more yellow and even pull in some white 
that'll ensure that this really shows up. Sometimes we need a little bit of white when we're trying to cover up something a lot darker. So I'm going to push and tap. And this is along the top. Right? We'll have our waterfall right down here. And then I want it to look like there's bushes coming down on the side. So you can see how neat that is, how you create the coolest looking little bushes with this kind of a brush. Now I might add a little bit more after I apply my waterfall. And then if you want to add, so I'm just going to take a little bit of water now because I'm almost done with this brush. I want to loosen up the paint a little bit and maybe bring back a little bit of that forest we had back there. Just a little bit, little hints of that. And we are going to come in with our next brush and I'll show you what we're going to do, but I just want to add a little bit more of a highlight on some of these bushes. So more yellow and white this time. And I'm going to start adding right at the top here where more of the light would be hitting. Okay, and now I'll wash that brush off. Okay, so hopefully you guys are learning a lot so far. I've got so much more to show you. Are you ready for our next brush? It is, you guessed right, I'm sure you guys were waiting for this, the fan brush. So the fan brush is one of my top five must-have brushes. All these brushes are gonna take you so far in your journey of learning to paint and you're gonna really enjoy this one. Um, the first time I saw this brush being used was when I was a little girl and I was watching Bob Ross on TV and I just kind of fell in love with this brush. I thought it was, I just call it the magic brush because it is pure magic and you can create waterfalls with it, um, trees with it. I use it for waves in uh, my paintings and clouds too. So, but today I'm just gonna show you touch base a little bit on some trees and how to paint a waterfall using this fan brush. So let's get started with this one. Okay, so first I'm gonna pull in, I'm gonna do some trees, okay? So we're gonna pull in to the dark black green mixture, pull and load both sides, and then I wiggle to make sure I have that shape. And I've got a little ridge of paint on the end of my brush. I'm gonna come over here and I'm just gonna pick Maybe one to start. Now there's the tree trunk, so you can tap or you can pull and sweep up. Now to do the top of the tree, you're gonna leave us a little space at the top and just have a little line there. Then you're gonna use the very corner of the brush. So just the corner like this to do those little baby branches. And then I'm gonna start pushing and tapping, doing a little dance with my brush side to side. And there you go, you've got a nice little tree there. And I'll do another one. We'll do one on the other side too. So first I'll add a little one in here. So there's my little tree trunk. Another brush that's really, really good for painting trees is the Filbert brush. And I have, I'm sure I've got a little video. I've got a video on different trees. All the different trees you can paint with a Filbert brush. Okay, again, let's pull one right here. This one's kind of leaning a little bit. I like to have a leaning tree. Again, we're gonna leave that little space at the top and then just tap in lightly. So if your brush starts to spread apart like that, go back and wiggle it. And do your little tap dance side to side. 
And there we go, there's another little tree. So much fun painting these. So I'm gonna paint another one. This time I'm gonna pull in some yellow. We can add a little bit of yellow to the tree. If you want it to not be so dark. Sometimes it's nice to have more of that silhouette look. Let's pull one right in here. There we go, just like that. Okay, so I think I'm ready to uh, show you guys how to paint a waterfall. Let me wash this off. And dry it off. Now it's okay to have these little splits in my brush. You know how it's kind of sectioning off. It looks more like a, a rake. Um, that's good. I want that because I want to have lines and the back here showing up underneath the waterfall or through the waterfall, I should say. So now I get to use my favorite colors. I've got a lot of colors that I like, but oh, I just love my phthalo blue. So I'm going to take that phthalo blue, quite generous with it, load both sides, get a little ridge of paint. I always like to have that. You can pull across like that if you want. And I'm going to start from right here, pull and drop. Now what I need to do is just give me a second, guys. I've got to get this canvas out of here because I can't get to the bottom of the painting. Okay, so I'm going to do that again. So you're going to line your brush up, pull, and then curl over and drop. I'm going to pick up some more paint and I'm going to do that again. Pull and drop. Maybe let's come around this side too. So you can come around from both sides and have it, have it drop from both sides. And then I'm going to take a little bit of water on my brush and I'm just going to go over the bottom here to create this beautiful little pool down here. There, isn't that pretty? And I'll take more of that blue. And I'm just gonna scumble with the side end of my brush here. I'm gonna take, oh, let's take a little bit of turquoise as well. That's always pretty to add. Let's start, pull and drop. Little ripples down here. And now we're going to go into our white and finish this waterfall up. So I would like it if it was separated a little bit. So if you want to do that, you can kind of tap. And I think I'll start with this side first. So I'm going to line it up, pull over, and drop over and drop. Get a little bit of that blue paint out of my brush. So here we've got it spread apart and I want to just keep it like that so I'm gonna tap tap so I get the white on the ends. And I'm gonna try this again very lightly. There we go. That's the look that we want. We want it looking see through we want to see that beautiful blue underneath right and then push and tap push and tap for the base of the waterfall i'm going to do this again you can even curve over like that. And so I'm going to just rinse my brush off. I am going to go back to my mop brush, which now is this is a different one. The other one's wet, so it won't I, I need it to be really dry and soft and poofy like this. And what I'm going to do is make it look a little bit softer back here so I'm barely, 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 barely touching the canvas. I'm 
So really, really soft like that. Then I could take a little bit of white and also tap in like that. And then have it coming, pull up from the bottom just like that. Take a little bit more of my white and my turquoise and soften down at the bottom. Now I really did like that turquoise back there so I'm going to try while I've got this soft turquoisey color on my brush. I'm going to try. Oh yeah, that works. And this also is really complementary to the light blue violet as well as the light pinky color that we have going on so that's why it looks so pretty in this sky. Okay I'm going to leave that. Now next brush I think this is the fourth one yeah this is the fourth one and it's a flat brush and I'll show you why this is so important. Um, there's a few reasons why you really need a flat brush. Um, if you're doing buildings where you need straight edges, flat straight edges and if you're working on sun rays so we could have a few little sun rays in here maybe just to show you guys I don't know if it's probably not going to work actually that well because I've got to be careful I don't and I already did there I gotta take that off I accidentally picked up a little bit of the blue there so you can do this yeah so you need a flat brush to do sun rays and you also need a flat brush in this case for this painting. I'm going to take black and dark green and I'm just going to go down here at the base for some shadow. Maybe some rocks. This is going to give us more contrast and depth. Oh. And another thing, so it works really well if you want to do some reflections in the water. So you take your brush with a little bit of water and the paint that you just applied. So the paint that you applied, the black right in here, a little bit of black, maybe a bit of dark green in there. You can make it look like there's some rocks and then for a reflection, pull and flick down just like we did with our, our forest up there. Same thing. Now I'm going to do a little bit here to this side, bring in a little bit more shadow along the side. That gives us more depth. You see that guys? And also uh, what depth will do is it will create more of um, uh, light and shadow. It'll look a little bit more 3D. Now the other thing you can use and that you really need a flat brush for is creating stairs. So you guys know that a lot of my paintings have staircases in them. One of the reasons why I love staircases so much is that they, re they represent moving up. Um, it's positive and it's, it just is got a special meaning, significance to me. Um, I think they add a lot of character in paintings as well. So today I'm going to show you how to incorporate a staircase in here. And I think we'll just use the colors that we have. So maybe we'll make, we can make brown. We'll take yellow, neon red, and black. A little bit more. I don't mind dirtying up these colors because, so see if we have more yellow with our black, it's gonna look green. And to balance that out, to make it look more brown, you add a bit of that red. So you get it on the, bottom of your brush there and we'll start right here it's closer to us it's going to do a long flat line leave a space they're going to get shorter and shorter and then they're going to come up over here right there so if you can't see that it's kind of dark right now and I don't know how the camera how you guys are seeing that through the screen but I'm going to take a little bit of white we're going to lighten this up. I'm going to add a highlight right here. 
And this might look really crooked, I don't know. It's just the way I've got the camera set up. I'm not uh, painting straight on, so it's making it challenging for me. But you guys get the idea. So it's really easy to paint stairs. You just do lines that get shorter and shorter and you can change directions, right? So you keep, when you start a line, you start it up a little bit further away there and that will give you that flow. And then you wanna bring it back here and then it's going up. Maybe there's a bridge there. I'm not, I'm not gonna paint a bridge, otherwise this video is gonna to take too long, but maybe we've got a little, make some of these look a little bit more like rocks. And then maybe there's just a little bit down there reflection. Okay, so what I'm what I'm going to do next is add one more highlight. Make this one the brightest one. So I'm going to add my peachy brown mixture here. I like a nice soft peachy highlight to my staircase. I like them to have a glow. So this is going to be thinner, try to be thinner. Okay, I'm going to reload my brush. I need it on the end. You want it to be nice and flat. And then just keep going up. Isn't that nice? Doesn't that just add a lot of character to the painting? And you can really put a staircase in any painting and it's going to look cool. Um, you could also do a railing by turning your brush this way and adding little lines that go straight up and down. Okay, quickly like that. This is just, I want to show you guys, uh, I'm not, you don't necessarily need to put all of this into your painting. I just want to show you guys as much as I can in this video to make it worthwhile so you guys can learn the most. And if you guys are appreciating my videos and all of my tips that I'm offering you guys, um, you can, I know you guys are wondering how you can say thanks and donate because our classes cost a lot of money, right? And I'm, you guys are getting so much uh, for free here and I really appreciate any donation you can make through Patreon. So I'll have a link below. Okay, so there we go. And then you can also use a flat brush to come around. Just like that. So there we've got our little staircase, little railing. If you want to add a shadow, you mix, get that dark color again. It's so a black, red, and yellow. And pick the outside of those little railing posts to add a shadow to. And then right in here, looks like he could fall through, so I think I just need to add a little bit more of a shadow there in between. All right, so I've got one more brush to show you guys, but before I show you that brush, there's one thing I wanna do on the edge here, and I'm gonna take I'm going to use my filbert brush for this. So I want to do a highlight and just do a few little um, tops to these little bushes. So I'm going to take my yellow and my green. There might be a little bit of white in there too, I don't know. Let's add a bit more green, make it a little bit darker. Okay, and then we're just going to just add a little bit in here. So this way it tucks those stairs in. It doesn't look like the stairs are over top of the bushes. It looks like they've been, they're nestled in there and they've been in there for quite some time. So you, I like having it spill over too. So you can just tap and have maybe there's like ivy or something and it's just growing right over onto those stairs. I love that look. We'll just kind of bring it up there to follow where that staircase goes. And then right in here, where we have our waterfall edge right there, you want to just kind of cover that up a little bit, right? It's 
So let's just bring a little bit of foliage over top of here. Oh, I had a lot of blue there. I just picked up some blue. Uh, I'm going to take a little bit more of my green and my black, mix it up, push it on the tip of my brush. Try that again. Yeah, just to show you guys that it looks really cool. If you want to have a few little branches that come in front of the waterfall, that also helps to push that waterfall back further, and it's kind of nice. Gives it a, a nice look. Okay. We need to give those a little bit of a highlight. And then as promised, I'll show you what you need a liner brush for. So let's go into our green and our yellow. Actually, I'm gonna need, because the paint is thick, so I'm gonna need a thick layer like this. And I'm gonna very lightly push and tap So whereas before it looked like the water, it didn't make sense, right? It looked like it was starting coming from over top of the bushes. Now it looks like it's coming from behind, which makes more sense. Um, so you kind of have to think about things like that, right? When you're painting and you can do all sorts of neat little things like this with the, with the filbert brush, great little different looking plants and vines. Look at that. It's just amazing. You can use it for, Adding some more green. Use it for bush or branches on your trees. You can do a combo of uh, fan brush and filbert brush for your trees. There's just so much, so much I want to teach you guys, and and I'm just so passionate about art and painting. And I taught for many, many years in a classroom setting, and um, then I decided to just do give YouTube a chance so I could reach more people. And uh, I'm really enjoying it. All right. So as promised, I'm going to show you what you need this last brush for and why it's so important. So number five, a liner brush. And right there's, you could have this little long one like this if you're painting grass, if you want to paint wispy grass. Or you can have a smaller one like this if you're working on tiny little branches. Um, so what I want to use this for is I think I'm just going to uh, incorporate a little branch coming out here just so that I can show you guys. You want to get it wet and to a fine point like that. So it's for painting small, more detailed things. Hair, if you're a portrait artist or an animal artist. What I want to do is just show you how, it, how you can use this to apply a nice little line so we can just make this stand out a little bit more. And like this little board connecting through, add a little shadow to that. So this is a very important brush to have. To get into all those little spaces that are small, painting houses, painting little chimneys. So if you're into miniature paintings and say you're just working on maybe a little 3x3 three three or 4x4, four four, you're going to want smaller brushes and you're definitely going to want a few liner brushes. Maybe right in here I'll have a little branch coming out. I'm just gonna pull and wiggle. Okay, so pull and wiggle. And I've just made that brown color right with black, yellow, white, and red. I want this to be a warmer brown so it stands out against all this black down here. And if it doesn't show up enough, Take a little bit more of the yellow and the red. So 
you can do a little half circle on some of those rocks. Then if it's still not bright enough, let's go in for some white. Very lightly. Pull in some delicate little branches here. And then say up here, maybe there's, maybe you want to have some willow trees, different types of trees. And you just pull and flick. So you need water though, that's the key. So many of my students had somebody actually start crying during the class because she was so, and not a child, it was grown up, she was so frustrated with the liner brush, she actually just started crying. So it's really important to know that if you're frustrated with it, it's not you. You just really need practice. <clears throat> Excuse me. It takes practice uh, with getting a feel for how to use a liner brush and how to create little branches. So you just don't want to push too hard. The harder you push, right, you're going to make it thicker. And when you just use the very tip and barely touch, then you're going to get those nice little branches that you want. Right in here, I just need to add, so I'm just picking up straight black with no water. I want to add a shadow to make this stand out. And see how I just kind of pulled it out in the water? You can have a little a little hint of a reflection in there if you want. Just a little something like that to make it pop out a bit more. So I think this painting is pretty much done. I do have some of this gorgeous neon red left that is calling to me and I can't resist. So I think I'm gonna take some of that with a little bit of white. I don't wanna blend it too much. Just want to kind of have a scoop of both. I might have picked up a little bit of brown on there. That's okay. So maybe we will have, maybe we'll have some flowers right in here. So the liner brush again for little flowers. Just a little color right here. Some pretty flowers just kind of spilling over the edge. And then a little reflection in the water. It's always nice something. A little bit of green. Okay, so thanks so much for watching, you guys. I hope you learned a lot today. Please give this video a big thumbs up, join my Patreon, and help me continue to be able to bring you guys the best art advice and tips and techniques that I can, because I love doing what I do, and I'll see you next time very soon in another video. Bye!